Good morning, Bears. This is the Monday's edition of the WBBN News. I'm Jesus. And I'm Evan. And we got a lot going on, so please listen up to the following announcements. Starting this week, Bayside will be following the district's new cell phone policy. Wireless communication devices including cell phones, AirPods, Airbuds, headphones, etc. Your device should be set to silent and should not be visible during instructional time. Use of devices can be authorized by a teacher or administrator for instructional purposes only. Wireless communication devices can be used before school, at lunch, during class change, and after dismissal bell. Teachers will begin reporting violators to the deans with referrals, detentions, and suspensions will be given for multiple infractions. Any junior who would like to apply to be a part of the patient care assessment program next year, please see Ms. Carl Barlow in room 666 for an application. If you are pursuing a career in healthcare, this EFSC dual enrollment course is highly recommended. And now let's take a look at some highlights from our Lady Bears basketball team. In honor of Women's History Month, today we will be looking at a woman who not only changed the entertainment industry, but is also the wealthiest African-American woman of the 20th century. Oprah Gail Winfrey was born on January 29, 1954 in Kosciusko, Mississippi. Oprah was raised by her single teenage mother in rural Mississippi, then later moved to inner city Milwaukee. At an early age, Oprah discovered she had a natural gift for public speaking. She would often speak at church and women's groups as a kid. In high school, she won a speech contest, which awarded her a full scholarship to college. She attended Tennessee State University. In 1971, Oprah entered the Miss Teen Fire Prevention Pageant, in which she won first place. After the pageant, she was later offered a job as a newsreader from the local radio station. She ended up taking the job and loved it especially because she now knew she would have a future in the industry that she loves. In 1973, she was offered a job as a news anchor from CBS News Station. She ended up taking the job in which she became the first African-American news anchor in Nashville history. In 1983, Oprah moved to Chicago to host her first talk show, AM Chicago. In 1985, Oprah's first and most popular movie, The Color Purple, was released. The movie was very successful and won many awards. Three short years after Oprah's first talk show, AM Chicago, aired, it was renamed to The Oprah Winfrey Show. The show was a huge success with over 10 million viewers daily. Within the first year of the show being aired, it accumulated $125 million in revenue, with Oprah making an estimated $30 million within the first year alone. Winfrey became the first woman to gain ownership of her program and produced it through her own production company, Harpo Productions. The show ran for 25 seasons. In 2011, Winfrey moved to her own network, the Oprah Winfrey Network. The network consisted of original programming and shows featuring Oprah conducting celebrity interviews and promoting her book club. Oprah has accumulated a vast amount of awards and nominations throughout her career. Oprah holds 18 Daytime Emmy Awards. She has been nominated for two Oscars, as well as three Golden Globes. In 2013, President Barack Obama awarded Oprah with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Oprah is also a philanthropist. She founded the Angel Network in the early 90s and has raised over $50 million for charitable programs in the U.S. and Africa. Oprah has a reputation for being very hardworking and dedicated to her job. She is a very successful woman. According to Forbes magazine, Winfrey was the richest African American of the 20th century and the world's only black billionaire for three years running. Life magazine hailed her as the most influential woman of her generation. 
That is why Oprah Winfrey is today's Women's History Month Spotlight. For more information about Oprah and other amazing women, log on to womenshistorymonth.gov. And we're back. Here are a few more announcements. Any student interested in being part of the yearbook staff next year, listen up. Applications are now available through Ms. Fowler in room 642. You could pick one up before or after school or during class change. The class is by application only and the deadline to apply is April 6th. National Art Honor Society is looking for additional honor students who have completed at least one semester of Bayside Art with a B or better. You can join them at club meetings on Wednesdays from 3.40 to 5 p.m. They are currently working to finish a tile mosaic installation on the remaining cement bench at the end of the 600 building. Membership is $5 per year. Members who are seniors are eligible to earn a colorful honor cord for graduation by reaching a minimum 3.5 GPA and a total of 40 volunteer hours with the club. Contact Ms. Wiley in room 615 or email questions to wiley.cheryl at brevardschools.org. Students, if you haven't purchased a yearbook yet, time is running out. Your books are on sale for $80. Log on to yearbookforever.com. The deadline to purchase one is March 30th. That wraps up this week's edition of WBBN News. Make sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bayside WBBN. Have a great week, Bears.